Dear students, now let me explain you what is a periodontal chatting form and what how we have to assess the periodontal status of the patient in this chatting form. So as you see, this is the complete periodontal status chatting form and this has got both maxillary teeth, buccal surfaces here and palatal surfaces here and similarly mandibular teeth represented the facial surfaces here and the lingual surfaces here. Now in this periodontal chatting form, the various parameters that can be recorded are periodontal pocket depth, gingival recession, furcation involvement, specifically what is the grade of the furcation whether it is grade 1, 2, 3 or 4 and on which surface is the furcation present. On the maxilla you can say the furcation could be on the buccal surface or the uh, distal or the mesial surfaces or on the mandible it could be buccal or lingual surface. So accordingly you need to write the surface of the involvement of furcation also. If there is mobility of the teeth you can write here grade 1, 2 or 3. So mobility of the teeth can also be recorded here. Pocket depth, recession, grade and surface of the teeth can be recorded. Full mouth plaque score and full mouth bleeding score can also be entered in the periodontal charting form. Okay, so here for the pocket depth, before we enter any details on this, it is very important to record the patient's name, IC or the registration number and on the date when the periodontal charting is being recorded. Periodontal status or periodontal assessment in the charting form can be done not only at the initial visit but it can be reviewed at later date after the treatment to see how much is improved and all. So the, for that purpose, it is better to always record the date on which the charting form is being recorded. Now let us see how to enter. As you know that either for the pocket depth or recession, usually we record on the six sides per tooth. What are the six sides? Mesial buckle, mid buckle and distal buckle. So whatever the buckle three sides, you can write the pocket depth here. For example, the patient has a pocket of six, four, and 5 on the tooth 1 8. So this corresponds to tooth 1 8, 1 7 and so on. So if at all the patient has got on the same tooth, once you finish entering uh, all the teeth on the buccal surface probing, then you write the record the probing on the palatal surface. So when you record the probing on the same teeth on the palatal surface, if the patient has got no much pocket on the palatal surface, he may have 3, 4 and 2. So totally you are recording 6 on each tooth. right? So similarly on the same tooth if there is recession which is measured from the CEJ to the gingival margin. Accordingly you can write the patient doesn't have any recession then 0, 1, 0 or if the patient has a recession only on the mid buccal surface or if the patient has a lot of recession palatally you can write 2, 3, 4 depending on how much ever the recession that is present. So this is an example of how we record. If there is no furcation, you can record no or absent, so 0, 0. If there is a furcation on the tooth 1, 7, you can write there is a grade 2 furcation buckle. So it is a B which indicates there is a buccal furcation present. So that can be understood. Now. The other important thing when you enter the details in the periodontal charting form is how to actually estimate the CAL, the clinical attachment loss. As discussed in the previous video, clinical attachment loss is nothing but the sum of the pocket depth and the gingival recession. So for this particular area, or for this particular tooth on the buccal surface, there is the CAL of 6, 1 plus because there is 0 plus 6, 1 plus 4 and 0 plus 5. So it is 6, 5 and 5. Alright, this is the CAL, clinical attachment loss. Similarly, the CAL here in this tooth is 3 plus 2, 3 plus 4 and 4 plus 2. So it is 5, 7 and 6. So for this entire tooth, if you want to have a CAL, then you can take a sum of all the uh, scores by 6 because there are 6 scores or we usually we don't calculate the cal per tooth when we want to estimate the clinical attachment loss we estimate for the overall area of the patient 
So once you finish uh, recording the pocket depth and recession, accordingly you sum up of all your scores and you can estimate the CAL based on the total sum of all the scores of your PPD plus recession you can sum up together and once you sum up the PPD and recession then you can actually divide by the total number of uh, the sites that are present. The total number of sites that could be present are The total number of sites that are present could be, it is total number of teeth present times 6. If the number of teeth in the patient are few teeth missing, the number of teeth in the patient times 6. Okay, so this is the sum of the P scores of the PPD and recession by total number of teeth times 6. So this can give you a total clinical attachment loss. Okay. So this is how we estimate the total clinical attachment level. How to record? Importantly, you have to write three digits in each box. This is very, very important. You can't just write one digit. You have to write on six sides. Okay, six sides and then you estimate the total clinical attachment loss. You can also record your pocket, uh, I'm sorry, the plaque score or the bleeding score in this patient by using dichotomous bleeding index as shown just now. Using the dichotomous index, if at all, you once you are taking O'Leary plaque index using this closing tablet, you just record if the plaque is present, you can say 1. If there is no plaque, you will say 0, then 1, then 0, 0, 1, 1, so on. And then you can sum up all your scores and divide by total number of teeth present times 100. That gives you the percentage of plaque scores. Similarly, the bleeding score also you can record. Now in this scoring charting form you can observe there is PPD which is pocket probing depth, REC indicates gingival recession score and then BOP is bleeding on probing. So bleeding on probing also whenever we calculate the full mouth bleeding score percentage of bleeding score in the patient FMBS we call it as FMBS. So full mouth bleeding score. So whenever we calculate or estimate the full mouth bleeding score, we write the score in the three digit score. For example, the patient has bleeding score of a 0 or 1. So 0, 1 or 0 or 0, 0, 0 if there is no bleeding or 1, 1, 1 if there is bleeding. It's only a dichotomous index writing only present or absent. Once you write like that for bleeding on probing on all the teeth, then you can simply sum up all your scores, sum up all the BOP scores and then you divide by the number of teeth times 6 okay which will be 6 sites per tooth you have done and number of teeth present so this indicates this indicates the bleeding on probing percentage so if you give we want the percentage times 100 which gives you the percentage of bleeding score in this patient so if you are doing this first visit, you can say it is baseline. If you are doing after six weeks reassessment, you can do a six weeks, whichever visit you are doing, you can highlight also. Okay, so this is the periodontal charting form. Hope you all are clear. Uh, usually the students do mistakes uh, because one student is measuring and the other partner of the student is actually recording in the sheet. There should be equal, uh, you know, uh, understanding importantly that they don't have any miscommunication in understanding or recording of the sheet. So very importantly, whenever you start with entering the periodontal charting form, the first thing you should do is, uh, first of all, strike out the teeth that are missing. For, for this patient example, tooth 15 or tooth 24 is missing. You strike out these teeth first, including their columns. If you don't do this, you go on, the, the assistant may go on, your partner may go on writing, and accidentally it will be recorded in a wrong column. At the end only you realize, oh, you entered in a wrong column and again you have to probe the patient. Please remember, you are doing a pocket probing and it could be sensitive and very invasive for the patient also. So try not to repeat the probing uh, for the charting sake. Okay, so strike off all the missing teeth first and in between, in between you can also verify whether are you doing tooth 1-6 are you on tooth 1, 2 
and so on so that you can avoid any wrong scoring or wrong entry of the data. I hope it is clear.